Welcome everybody, this is Papa Sean of Cavern Angels and we are looking at an X-Swing 1 and done run on a shield generator. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the loadout quickly here as we review we've got primary weapons burst cannons. This will give us the most DPS on static targets. It will also allow us to see where the shields end and begin. We've got boost auxiliary, the uh, extension there, so that that will give us a, a full bar boost on a 30 second cooldown. Great for getting in and out. The Proton Torpedo for that 4,000 damage. Uh, we got to get underneath the shields for that to take effect, though, so the window will be a little tight. We can make it happen, though. Countermeasures, I go with Particle Burst. Uh, it's good for protecting your allies uh, against shield, uh, missiles coming in as well as yourself, and even your cap ships. It just blocks everything in a 200-meter radius. The whole reinforced hull and overloaded shields, they're going to reduce the damage, increase your health pool for your hull of your ship, uh, this way, you will live longer and uh, help get you to your location where you were heading in on that run. The slam engine is going to give you additional passive boost generation, so just good to have as the uh, X-Wing is going to be predominantly utilizing its boost for reorientation. Uh, reinforced hull gives you a lot of health, but it reduces your acceleration and maneuverability, so that slam engine will give you the ability to change directions utilizing drift. All right. So with Drift, you're going to be boosting, and then you can hold down your boost if you have that setting set up, and that will allow for you to drift. Other people have a double tap. I prefer the hold. Uh, we're going to go ahead and launch this training scenario in Pilot, which will give the same health pools as a ranked fleet battle. We're going to go ahead and open up the menu and deploy that flagship. Go ahead and select our flagship subsystems, and we're looking for the one that's closest to us on the approach for coming in on the left hand side of the star destroyer its left our right then we're going to want to target its left shield generator our right use any terrain like this right here on um, your approach uh, be careful with your boost as you're getting in pretty close to the star destroyer it might throw off your run we want to slide in right underneath the shields here you can kind of pump your lasers and see once it starts taking damage you can slow your speed and keep your fire going on that. Don't want to stop. I kind of stop there. Boost extension and I'm boosting away. You don't want to come to a complete stop when you're sitting on a Star Destroyer. It will light you up. Fortunately, we've got the uh, increased hull and the overloaded shields, so that didn't hurt us too bad. But just cycling through the targets, you can see we've already reduced the Star Destroyer down to one shield generator. All right, so that was a single run. You can use your boost extension and your boot passive boost to get you back into the ship to resupply. You could also resupply at your frigates if you happen to have one available to you. Uh, if you find yourself low on shields, you probably want to go straight back because you can see that overloaded shields take a long time to resupply. So the, all that means is if you're a new player, just go back to your cap ship, you fly in there, and you come right back out with another ship. doesn't take any time at all. So it's definitely worthwhile in order to ensure your morale stays high on your team. Alright, so we're going to do the uh, run again, this time on the right side generator, right for the Star Destroyer, left for us, as we're making our approach. And I went ahead and pumped that, uh, pass, uh, that, that boost. So we probably want to build up a little bit of boost before we make our way in. That way we can make an escape as well. Alright, let's orient ourselves with the Star Destroyer. We're a little bit ahead of the notch. We got the uh, countermeasure there. We're a little ahead of the notch, so we want to make sure we align ourselves up as we begin our run. Go ahead and fire. As soon as you see some damage happening, you know you can fire your proton torpedo. Go ahead and reduce your speed as you come in so you can skew it just a little bit. I think I could have brought it down to 3%. Let's see if we can't come back around, just dip underneath the shield gens just a little bit. Slow down here. Don't, don't bang, don't bang, baby. No, baby, come back. So we want to kind of balance our shields. One hit ought to do it. And that'll take us out with it. I kind of missed the last fire there. I could have probably built up my laser fire a little bit more going in, and that'll give you additional damage. I think it's uh, additional 20%. So we'll go ahead and show you how to bring out a new ship. All you got to do is open up the practice menu. You can remove the ship. Boom. ISD's gone. And then you can go ahead and deploy another one. It will recycle your ship so that you can get back out there. 
with a fresh ship, even if you just got one. Alright, we'll go ahead and flip to the flagship subsystems, and begin another run on this fresh Star Destroyer, and, and this is how you can just practice your runs until you're happy with uh, your performance before taking it out in front of everybody so that they don't laugh at us when we try to do this in a ranked fleet battle. Alright, so again, here's the notch, lining up the ship. You can boost your way a little bit, but be careful as you get too close to it. You can fire your lasers to see where the shields begin, but as soon as you see some damage happening, kind of slow your roll there as you come in here. Again, I didn't I didn't increase the, uh, the laser charge very well. But if you do increase your laser charge before you go in, you'll have an additional amount of damage that you can do. You can see it charges up pretty quick with these uh, lasers that we're using here. All right, so I'll go ahead and line us up. We don't have full shields, but you can see we'll be able to utilize the same ship for a second run because you get two proton torpedoes. We're roughly in the starting position that we want to be in. We're beginning our lock. I got full lasers this time, uh, but I don't have boost. Come on, boost. Go, 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 go. All right, so I was able to boost my way through. I did not utilize the firing of the uh, proton torpedo in time, but you can see even with just lasers alone, it's enough to mosquito and take out a shield generator. So the proton torpedo is not necessary um, to take out a shield generator with the one life of the ship. We'll go ahead and pass and get that boost going again here. The uh, what else? The shield generators being overloaded shields are not going to come back, so there's no point in putting any power into the shield generators once they're gone. Uh, your personal starfighter shields, that is. But the uh, the enemy starfighters are going to take you out, so that's really why you need the proton torpedo. You don't want to just mosquito and, and pick off like 10 to 50 percent of a shield generator. You want to make your approach, fire your proton torpedo, and then you can mosquito to ensure the demise of that shield generator. That'll be a huge, huge bonus for your team. Because what happens when you take out one generator is just imagine the full health pool of the Star Destroyer's shields uh, being cut in half as soon as you take down a generator. So let's just call it, I don't know, 50,000 shields that they've got. You dropped it down to 25,000 just by taking out one shield generator and even before your team has chipped through those the remainder of the shields. That way, proton torpedoes can come in and uh, finish off the last bit. We're kind of gliding towards the uh, Star Destroyer there. So that'll help your team. Uh, and then if you happen to get the second shield generator, that means shields are gone for the rest of the game. That means passive damage can happen to the Star Destroyer. That means you can win the game that much easier, and then your team can have free reign on their power system. One ion missile, a few ion shots, or one ion torpedo is sufficient to take out the power system. So you, you, you taking those shield generators out straight away is going to help your team win. So even if you're a dogfighter, pick up some objective skills, practice it out here in the uh, practice area, and then if you can drop those shield generators, then grab your dogfighter, go right back to it, help them take out the power system, and you're going to find yourself winning more games. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful to you guys and, and a build and a path and approach for taking out these shield generators in a single pass. And uh, I'll see you out there. Uh, link to the Discord for Cavern Angels is in the description. And I'll catch you later.